And as I did that, he began to open things to me, expose things to me that I wasn't exposed to before. And that's the way it has to be in the earth for the children of God to be exposed to things they haven't been exposed to before if they want to come up and do what they're called to do. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words. That's his method, that's how you do things. One of the words or set of words that you should be saying, if he is God and he is the living God, the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, because you should worship God. Now, of course, those words are not found in most, most places, but we worship the Holy Ghost because he's God, he is the living God. Who's the living God? The Holy Ghost. Should be knee-jerk reaction. Who's the Holy Ghost? No, oh, living. Who's the, who's the living God? Holy Ghost. Right? So we worship the living God, we worship the Holy Ghost, we use the words, I worship you, Holy Ghost. Now, it took a while to get here. Can you acknowledge that? Yes. You need to kind of know where you came from so you know uh, where you are and where you stand and that worshiping the living God is not some sacrilegious thing or worshiping the Holy Ghost isn't anti-Bible. We got here by following what jesus said that he's going to send another are you here yes. and so the holy ghost is god in the earth today we walk with him by saying words some of those words are i worship you holy ghost it took a while to get here and there was a price paid mm -hmm. you understand that you know you make spiritual progress by paying prices mm -hmm. now the price lots of times is financial but it's also other things yes. you pay a price Sometimes people don't want to go with you. Can you imagine that? Imagine me saying something that somebody doesn't like. I know it's hard to imagine, but imagine me saying it. What about you can't do that because what about the lost potential of possibly their tithes and offerings? Well, I got to make a choice. Am I going to am I going to say what God said or am I going to oh offend somebody possibly, most likely? You got to say what God said. I'm called to say what God said, not what people want to hear. Amen. Even if there's a price, part of the price is it's not popular. You know, I'll preach on fasting. It's not popular. Otherwise, everybody be doing it. Preaching on tithing, not popular. Otherwise, everybody be doing it. Preaching on any of the things. How about worshiping the Holy Ghost? What if, what if I'm supposed to preach on worshiping the Holy Ghost? How popular would that make me? Well, at first, probably not very popular. At first, most of the comments would be, oh, I don't like that. Because it's not what we were taught. Well, maybe what you were taught wasn't enough. My point is, it took a while to get here, and there's been prices paid. On many different levels, there's been prices paid. So, 1 Timothy. Now, I'm going to use a lot of scriptures tonight because I need to say something that I don't want to say I didn't want to say I didn't like it when I heard it so imagine if I didn't like it when I heard it and I didn't want to say imagine that when it comes out when people hear it they're not gonna like it they're not gonna to want to hear it you understand yep, that's right. but Jesus would have said well you gonna to go to he turned around to all his disciples that's all he had was his 12 days you going to Let's pray, Holy Ghost. I thank you. I thank you that this word is anointed. I thank you that I'm anointed to speak it. I thank you for letting me stand in that office to be able to proclaim this word. I consider it an honor and a privilege. I worship you, Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. First Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Well, what do you think we're talking about here? The honor would be payment and double would be well twice as much you understand that yeah. especially those who labor in the word and doctrine especially those who labor you know the word labor means work yeah. when people say this isn't work you're not work you don't do any work are you kidding me according to the word this is labor this is uh, intensive labor and there's a price paid up front for any of the things 
you know people can turn on the the internet and just oh good that, that word came and it was really nice it didn't cost them anything you understand mm -hmm. but it cost something to get here there was a price paid and there was labor there was many fastings there was many 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 and I can keep saying many until it got really anointing really annoying hours of praying in the spirit to get these revelations I'm laboring I've been laboring they labor in the word and doctrine doctrine is the word established possibly in a way that you didn't even understand before there be many doctrines of the church you understand that where they have the word they have the word on it but then they made a doctrine out of it for that church laboring in the word and doctrine my point there is that this is labor it takes effort it's work and I've been doing the work I've been doing the labor first Timothy 4 let's read verse 11 these things command and teach so you, you, you can teach it you t t teach it what about command do people like that no these things command and teach let no one despise thy youth youth but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity till I come give attendance look what he's telling him to do till I come work at this give attendance to reading to exhortation and to doctrine say doctrine. doctrine we'll be talking about this a little bit give attendance to reading to exhortation meaning speaking about it and to doctrine neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery meditate upon these things give thyself holy to them to them what to the doctrine you got to give yourself holy to the doctrine meditate upon these things give thyself holy to them that thy profiting may appear which speaks to me in saying if you don't give yourself holy to it the profiting won't appear verse 16 take heed unto thyself it's the first thing he tells him take heed to yourself and unto the doctrine you seeing the pattern here yes. take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine continue in them in them what in them doctrines bad english but you understand continue in the do in doing this continuing and continuing and doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee what about the people who don't want to hear it that won't help won't help them won't save them won't deliver them won't you know won't take them to where that doctrine is supposed to take them can you see this is work can you see that it takes some effort to get the doctrine into the earth it doesn't just fall on you like ripe cherries off a tree and if you continue you can prosper say continue continue what continuing would would entail I got so far then what do you do you go farther if you call up on the on the phone to somebody hey I'm on route 112 and I don't see your house and they say continue mm -hmm. we're up on the left farther you haven't gone far enough right continue continue in the doctrine there's more if you continue you'll save yourself and those that hear you first Timothy 5 verse 21 I'm starting to laugh on the inside I'm trying to hold it back verse 21 I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels is that in your Bible yes. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ well God God in the earth mm -hmm. you understand yeah. I charge thee before the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect 
angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another uh, doing nothing by partiality my point here is to bring out the elect angels is it in your Bible yes. is he charging you before them yes. yeah he was just talking about doctrine and how you got to continue in the doctrine and now he's charging you before the angels why because the angels have a large part to do with bringing in administering doctrine are you seeing this yes. says the elect angels do you remember that angels are called fellow laborers what was what was Timothy laboring in what was Paul laboring in the doctrine fellow laborers who's also laboring in the doctrine the angels are you here yes. angels have a lot to do with bringing in and managing the doctrine now you know this how many times did you see an angel it bring bring a message let's say to Mary Daniel here's a little side note about Daniel I was stud studying this to see how old he was when he did that 21 day fast because I've been studying the 21 day fast there and uh, Daniel was close to 90 years old when he did that 21 day fast did you know that I didn't know that I thought that was that was pretty cool but when you add up all the dates of when he came there and you know all those things close to 90 years old 21 day fast oh, I can't fast I'm too old all right are you 90 well, I really don't have an excuse and 20 days is in your purview so angels have a lot to do with man let's look at uh, I want I just want you to see this uh, because of the things I'm about to say I want you to see that this is the way it is angels have a lot to do don't you think God would be concerned about how doctrine comes for it's not just the word you can preach the word but when you're coming up with a doctrine it, it has more weight to it it because because the rest of the word kind of filters through that doctrine you know that's why when I say the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today you'd have a lot of the believers or churches say oh that's true but their doctrine doesn't uphold that at all their doctrine loses that you see so angels have a lot to do with bringing in doctrine into the earth and managing doctrine in the earth and doctrine doesn't just come by you know willy-nilly it comes by uh, paying the price and labor in the spirit and if you don't pay the price and labor in the spirit you won't get the doctrine Acts chapter 7 verse 53 who have received the law by what the disposition of angels how did they receive now was the law doctrine yeah it was the doctrine of the day right Moses was mightily used in it but how did it get to Moses according to this by the disposition of angels or disposition that's a strange word instrumentality they had a huge did they have a huge part according to this verse of scripture in bringing in the law yeah the law was doctrine so angels the same today they have a huge part of bringing in what doctrine is now as we go along here some won't receive what I'm saying but that's not really a big surprise you understand and it doesn't really throw me that much makes me sad not for myself but for them frankly what I'm gonna say pretty soon here I didn't want to receive it either but not long ago I was on a walk I was praying in tongues say praying in tongues, praying in tongues. I pray in tongues a lot it's part of paying the price to get the things of God not long ago while I was praying in tongues I was on a walk and an angel blew in my ear say an angel, an angel. see now angels they don't just show up for anything but part of what they're doing is establishing doctrine they set your your doctrine sets you on a path that you wouldn't be without the doctrine you understand yes. when people talk about the doctrine of grace if you if you take the doctrine of grace and you you go into the Bible and you start seeing all the things about grace right if you take the doctrine of the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today what happens you start seeing the scriptures in light of the Holy Ghost is God near today mm -hmm. right yes. okay 
so an angel blew in my ear and this was in response to me spending much time praying in the spirit about why people put everything off till heaven including healing and prosperity any of those things they put it off till heaven I'm like why well this angel he came up to me and he blew in my ear and he said because that's where their Lord is they know they can be healed they know they can be prospered they put it off to heaven because that's where the Lord Jesus is you see that yes. that's where their Lord is and with that which is often the case with God and his angels that speak his words it puts a lot more in you than just what was on the outside it sets you on a path a trajectory so to speak and I began preaching that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today more strongly from that day forward it wasn't that I had not mentioned it before it wasn't that I didn't preach on it before but it became a focus and I began preaching on it more because of that angel that said those things are you here then one day let's go to first Corinthians first Corinthians chapter 2 then one day while I'm, I'm meditating on this verse of scripture because I like this verse of scripture. remember I told you this is one of my favorite my favorite chapters in the Bible first Corinthians chapter 2 I like the whole thing the whole chapter mm -hmm. but as I'm meditating on it especially this verse of scripture verse 4 my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration or open show of the whole of the spirit and of power you there mm -hmm. verse 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God the power of who the power of the Holy Ghost remember because he said in demonstration my speech and preaching were in open show open showing of the Holy Ghost and his power in your speech and preaching that your faith what is your faith that's your religion that's your belief that's 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 who you are I'm such and such a faith your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men or the traditions of men or any of that but in the power of God of the power of Holy Ghost are you here yes. so that one day while I was meditating this is a while back I was meditating on this verse of scripture which means I say it over I think about it and then right at the end this same angel came and spoke in my ear and he said the word only just one word he said the word only that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God only now I'm not adding to scripture I'm just telling you what I received and what I heard where should your faith be in the power of God only should your faith be in something else no it should be in the power of God only and from then because as, as, a, as when they speak to you they put something into you that wasn't there before it set me on this direction and I began to preach more strongly that the Holy Ghost is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today remember that so you guys have been here for the whole thing you've seen the you've seen the the transition from how these things have gone you've been there for the whole ride and we know how we got here first I began to preach the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today that's pretty good then he's the only part of the Godhead of Father Son and Holy Ghost that's in the earth are you getting this where did I get that from where did I get that doctrine from the angel speaking one word Are you seeing that and in that word was a lot of other things like a package that just opens up with a bunch of files and around this time is this any fun mm -hmm. yes. around this time shortly afterwards I suppose the words came to me use the words I worship you Holy Ghost use the words I worship you Holy Ghost so I began to preach on using the words I worship you Holy Ghost are you here yes am I being faithful to the doctrine am I laboring in it am I going with it yes and what do you mean use the words meaning you say those words those are the words you say and I told you then then what happened 
i began to to understand what the words i worship you holy ghost was a new diversity of operations do you remember this mm -hmm. it's a new diversity of operations that a diversity of operations is a different thing that does something to you worshiping the holy ghost does something to you that not worshiping the holy ghost won't doesn't one of those right you understand if you don't worship the Holy Ghost you can't have the results of worshiping the Holy Ghost and then the room of Holy Ghost worship where you enter into a room a space an actual room in the spirit when you're worshiping the Holy Ghost how do we get there how do we get this strange seeming doctrine I'm not making it up I'm just I'm just trying to be obedient to to the angelic messenger remember we read that yep. first Timothy 5 21 the elect angel the special angelic messengers I hope you like this so far because you're not gonna like it when we get up a little farther are you here I use the word use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I began pre preaching on the new diversity of operations and the room of Holy Ghost worship and as I was in the room some of you remember this I was in the room meaning I was worshiping the Holy Ghost for an extended period of time I worship you Holy Ghost using those words I got into the room of Holy Ghost worship and an angel said I have nothing to do with people who don't worship the Holy Ghost is this exciting yes. Psalms 34 7 if you want to turn there you can that sounds strange angels that won't will have nothing to do with people who don't do a certain thing Psalms 34 and verse 7 the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them who does he deliver those that fear him the word fear can be translated worship if you look up the word fear it means to reverence it means to revere and if you look up those words it just means almost to the point of worship well this means worship so those the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that worship him and delivers them and so when the angel said I don't have anything to do with you if you don't worship the Holy Ghost are you here the good part of that is he does do things for people to worship the Holy Ghost and we know that because it's a diversity of operations so a few weeks ago I've 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 kind of dragged my feet on this a little bit I apologize believe me I've repented what do you mean repent I've turned from it and so now you're gonna get it because I can't go back you understand and I can't draw back and I can't slow down I have to keep doing and obeying and going forwards so a few weeks ago as I was using the words I worship you Holy Ghost that same angel that said only before remember mm -hmm. that your faith would be in the power of God only say only, only. he said only so as I'm using the words I worship you Holy Ghost the same angel that said only after I said the words I worship you Holy Ghost he said that word again he said the word only I worship you Holy Ghost only and when he said it to me I, I immediately rejected it off the cuff because I knew what it entailed I knew that it meant if I worship the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost only I'm not going to be worshiping the Father in heaven I'm not worshiping Jesus I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost only now bear with me I didn't like it I'm telling you I I could I don't like having to say this but I'm saying it worship the Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost only I didn't want to receive it I didn't want to hear it I knew the implications of it so I began to question God about it I said God what is this what's going on what's with that angel what angel the one that said the word only and you know what he says to me about the angel he said he speaks the word only now does God have a sense of humor or what 
but this angel spoke the word only Matthew chapter 8 verse 8 says speak the word only numbers 22 35 only the word that I shall speak only the word that I shall speak this angel speaks the word only now when we think of speak the word only obviously we're thinking he'll only speak the word of God but this particular one speaks the word only are you getting it all right so anyway the ramifications of this doctrine are far-reaching now I used to say and I've been see if I can qualify this the right way I used to say that I don't have a problem with people worshiping the Father or worshiping the Son I used to say that I'm probably not gonna say it much anymore and in theory I really don't have a problem with it the problem with it is that that's not what's happening okay in reality they're relig they're worshiping a religious concept they're wor worshiping a religious construct they're worshiping a religious uh, religion but in our day and age the Living God is the Holy Ghost and when you worship him you're worshiping the Living God just look at them and say do you worship the Holy Ghost do they use the words I worship you Holy Ghost no they don't it's absent in the body of Christ for the most part they're worshiping a religious concept they're worshiping a religious construct now if they're worshiping something that's false just bear with me here if they're worshiping something false then what would that be called that be called an idol so you have people that are worshiping a religious idol and tell me that's not true we have people in all kinds of churches they're not really worshiping God they're really because God is the Holy Ghost he's the Living God they're worshiping a religious form of God and it, it, it is tantamount to being an idol in the nostrils of the Living God who they're not worshiping is this fun yet I'm trying to get this across so in order to help you out here and not just speaking the word only but in that word only guess what it came all these other things the answers are you here let's look at some of the names of the Holy Ghost who is the Holy Ghost oh he's God in the earth today well we know he's the living God he's the one that's with us he's the one that is in the earth right now he's God in the earth today well the names of the Holy Ghost Holy Ghost obviously Holy Spirit you ever heard that he's the Holy Spirit how about the Spirit of Truth is he truth yes. he's the Spirit of Truth how about the Spirit of Grace mm -hmm. another one of his names the promise mm -hmm. is the name of the Holy Ghost the promise yes, yes. how about the comforter yep or just plain the Spirit mm -hmm. and people say you be led by the Spirit Jesus was led by the Spirit a name of the Holy Ghost the Spirit is Jesus here with us now no. no who is here with us now the Spirit all in all of those names he's still with us now believe me there's a lot more this is the whole message I'll probably preach on it in the future the names of the Holy Ghost but number one he is the Spirit of God mm -hmm. is he God yeah. he's should you worship him who should you worship only God mm -hmm. we're gonna get into this Philippians chapter 1 let's look at verse 19 for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ who is the Spirit of Jesus Christ the Holy Ghost one of the names of the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. when I'm worshiping the Holy Ghost who am I worshiping the Spirit. the Spirit of Jesus Christ so when I say I worship the Holy Ghost only am I just forgetting about Jesus no I'm worshiping the Spirit of Jesus Christ who is the Holy Ghost who's in the earth today he's God are you getting this yes. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 20 for it is not you that speak but the Spirit of your Father which speaks in you who would the Spirit of the Father be the Holy 
the Holy Ghost because he's in you we know that we're moved by the Holy Ghost to speak mm -hmm. are you getting this yes. when I worship the Holy Ghost only I am worshiping the Spirit of the Father I'm worshiping the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ do you understand that yes. they're not upset with you this is the way they had it fashioned now there's a lot more scriptures I could read on that but he the Holy Ghost is not jealous of the Father and the Son which is why all oh, you gotta worship me only you he's not jealous of the Father and the Son but he is listen he is jealous of the religion that people have made out of them and their religion doesn't allow them to worship the Holy Ghost who is God so he's jealous of that religion he's not jealous of people if they did actually worship the father and the son but because their religion and their doctrine points them in that direction that he's he's jealous listen I hope you can hear this the Holy Ghost is jealous he is jealous did you know that he's a jealous God he's jealous over the fact that people don't worship him they're worshiping some religious doctrine and a man-made tradition Reli traditions of men make the Word of God the power of God of none effect you understand that right yeah. he's he's jealous of the false religious doctrines that they've made out of it he's not jealous of the father and the son obviously he's jealous of the religion that they've made out of him none of which worship the Holy Ghost five words not found in Christianity you understand that yeah. can you see this yeah. and he's the Spirit of the Father he's the Spirit of Jesus Christ he's in the earth yeah. but because the religion has pointed everything off till heaven can you see how this this doctrine has kind of come almost full circle I know there's more to go but it's brought us to this place where we're worshiping the Living God living God who need your Holy Ghost so when I say I worship the Holy Ghost only I'm not ignoring the Father I'm not ignoring the Son I'm being more accurate because I'm worshiping the Spirit of the Father I'm worshiping the Spirit of Jesus Christ are you getting this yes. and believe me there's power in using the words I worship you Holy Ghost only you can see why I stomp my feet on this a little bit people got it people got to be framed up for this you can't just throw it on them because they'll go ha, 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 heresy right. when really what's heresy is what they've been preaching according to the Holy Ghost so let's look at the, a few more things here James and believe me I mean as soon as the angel spoke that word only to me again he speaks the word only by the way <laughs> yeah. right as soon as he spoke it I didn't like it but I began doing it because I wanted to see I wanted to understand and I started saying I worship you Holy Ghost only and as I did that he began to open things to me expose things to me that I wasn't exposed to before and that's the way it has to be in the earth for the children of God to be exposed to things they haven't been exposed to before if they want to come up and do what they're called to do are you getting this well I'm having fun anyway and I feel that the Holy Ghost is pleased James chapter 4 and let's look at verse 5 you there mm -hmm. James 4 verse 5 do you think that the scripture saith in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us who would that be the spirit that dwelleth in us the Holy Ghost and he says the scripture saith in vain who wrote the scripture the script the spirit that dwells in us lusteth to envy now that's a little bit strange to us but if you look up those words you get, there's other translation the uh, the English Standard Version says yearns jealously who does the Holy Ghost he's a jealous God he yearns jealously for what for you and for your worship and for your obedience in the earth and yet we have people that won't go there because of their false doctrine he is a jealous God and he's in the earth today he yearns jealously let's go to Exodus you put too much emphasis on the, the Holy Ghost how can I put too much emphasis on God and his dispensation 
Exodus 34, let's look at verse 14. Now, who's God in the earth today? The Holy, Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Is this in your Bible? Yes. Exodus 34, 14. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, his name is Jealous. We're talking about the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today and all these names he has. One of the names is he's Jealous. And he says, thou shalt worship no other God. Now, I'm not saying that the Father isn't God and Jesus isn't God, but they're not in the earth today. You understand? And we're not supposed to have any other God before us except the one that is God in the earth today, the Holy Ghost. And he contains, he is the Spirit of the Father. He is the Spirit of Jesus Christ. You understand? Mm -hmm. And no other God should be before you. Thou shalt worship no other God. Well, how many other gods does that mean then? No, no other God. For the Lord our God, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Are you getting any of this? Yes. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. I'm just telling you the words that I was given. And all of these things came through that one word. He speaks the word only. Isn't that amazing? I think that's wonderful when, a, when an angel comes and he speaks a word there's so much more in it than just the one word at the beginning it's, it's packages that open up over time so uh, uh, Deuteronomy there Deuteronomy 4 verse 24 for the Lord our God is a consuming fire are you here yeah. who would that be talking about who's a consuming fire who was a fire on the day of Pentecost came down right Jesus said he's gonna baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire and will consume right he was specifically talking about the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today Holy Ghost the Lord our God is a consuming fire even a jealous God is this right yes. what's he jealous of thou shalt worship no other gods who's he jealous of you and your worship who isn't worshiping the Holy Ghost a lot of people especially the ones that don't like me see so, yeah, I'm using lots of scriptures because I want you to see them I want you to see with your own eyes I'm not making this up I worship you Holy Ghost only see there's a bridge you got to cross to go there isn't there you got to really commit to I really believe this is God that's why about a lot of people won't go there mm -hmm. they might even say I worship you Holy Ghost but they, to go to I worship you Holy Ghost only is continuing the doctrine to its logical location you got to continue in the doctrine you got to go there and the whole and the angels are are there to help bring it to pass and to guide it and direct it Luke chapter 4 and then let's look at verse 8 you ready for this yes. and Jesus answered and said unto him get thee behind me Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only how committed are you him only shall you serve who am I serving one God the Holy Ghost God in the earth today you shall worship the Lord your God and him only say and him, and him only now if you serve him only where's I gonna leave you well I don't know who <laughs> no that is what you you need to follow the Holy Ghost Jesus was on the Mount here remember he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights he had to come up with this and when he came down it says Jesus returned verse 14 in the power of the Spirit why did he get to the power of the Spirit because he learned how to worship the Lord his God in him only did he serve then it said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me who is he serving the Spirit of the Lord I hope you're getting this is that word only in your Bible yes. yeah I mean I could go on here but why would we do this why would we first of all carry the doctrine onto the logical conclusion we we'll worship the Holy Ghost and then we see that he's God and then all of a sudden we see that he's a jealous God and we're only supposed to worship the whole we're only supposed to worship God mm -hmm. why would we do this second Chronicles 
you think God's pleased at all about having this being in the earth he told me that specifically a few a few weeks back he said nobody else will bring this into the earth somebody has to do it somebody has to listen and do it and say it and then continue on with it mm -hmm. say continue on. continue on second Chronicles 16 verse 9 for the eyes of the Lord who the Lord run to and fro where throughout the whole earth are you getting this yeah. who's the Lord Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself or reveal himself strong in other words strong would be power remember in faith in the power of the Holy Ghost only right to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him the eyes of the Lord Holy Ghost run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself in power and strong in the behalf of so why would we worship the Holy Ghost only in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him now the word perfect literally means single it means singular one perfect towards him Jesus was on the mountain fasting 40 days and 40 nights until his heart was perfect towards the Holy Ghost then he returned in the power of the Spirit are you here the eyes of the Lord Holy Ghost run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself in power on behalf of those whose heart is single towards him thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve isn't this fun mm -hmm. I don't know if it is or not but it's true and once again there's prices to be paid for things but there's a price paid up front to bring these things into the earth and you gotta you gotta do it whether people like it or not laboring in doctrine now I mentioned this before if you got two more minutes let me just share this Psalms 34 I shared this earlier why would we do this why would we worship the Holy Ghost only well number one he'll do things for those whose heart is single towards him single Psalms 34 9 oh fear the Lord you his Saints now remember what did I say the word fear worship, worship. we can transpose that into worship <laughs> later on I'll probably be talking about the fear of the Lord but right now they they oh fear or worship the Lord you his Saints for there is no want to those who fear him or worship him is there any benefit in worshiping the Holy Ghost only yes. yeah according to this verse of Scripture oh fear the Lord you his Saints for there is no want to them that worship him and earlier we read verse 7 the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that worship him and delivers them there is no want to them that worship him we're in Psalms go to Psalms 145 let's read verse 18 the Lord is nigh unto all that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth verse 19 he will fulfill the desires of them that fear him he will fulfill the desires of them that worship him is he a jealous God yes. are you supposed to worship the Lord your God and him only yes I hope you understand how we got here I know that you know it seems strange because so much of the doctrine that we've been taught didn't leave up to this place didn't lead us here but we weren't led here just by religious doctrine we were led here by the scriptures by the Holy Ghost and by the angels who are designed and called to bring people into doctrine and we've been laboring in them it says he will fulfill the desire of those who worship him he will fulfill the desires of those who worship him and there is no want to those that worship him I worship you Holy Ghost only using those words is literally the power of anything that you want anything that you desire he says if you will worship me I will give you anything you want 
remember that's what the devil quoted he was trying to say to Jesus he said if you bow down worship me I'll get in Jesus said no you worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve and look what he says he'll give you anything you want do you think Jesus knew that yes. of course he did so anyway let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people heard these things this evening I ask you to quicken them and let their ears be opened that they may do it that they may see it that they may worship you Holy Ghost only in the earth and we will be blessed by your power and your manifestation because our hearts are single towards you in Jesus name Amen, amen. Holy Ghost, oh God.